make our way into Colorado here in a few. And uh, yeah. Smash a giant buck. Smash some deers. My boy Heath from Texas. I met him last year in the mountain. He's here now. We got some pictures of a really good buck that I believe is the same buck from my first video three years ago when Marty and I didn't shoot him before the snowstorm. I'm going to put him up right now on the screen. I'm going to give you a picture of two days ago of him. I'm going to give you possibly a video, if another buddy will let me use it, of him last year. And then the picture of him three years ago. And I believe it's the same buck. And this guy right here is going to shoot him tomorrow morning. That's right. He's got the rifle. I've got the muzzle loader. There ain't no chance I'm shooting that muzzle loader. <laughs> where these, these deer live. So my man Barrett is is number one on the gun. And you know what? We're gonna let you watch it on a video. In one point two miles. Get ready for it. In about five minutes. Yep. Fast forward to tomorrow morning in five minutes. Yeah. And he is gonna be hugging the deer, crying, thanking me <laughs> for taking. All right, here we go. We got Muscle Man over here, showing off the guns. Sun's out, guns out. Coming up the trail. Probably about a two hour trip. Probably just less than two miles. So we'll see, just ran into another hunter coming off the hill. So that's one less dude up here and he's hunting elk. So, fingers crossed, yep. this is a short trip and get home quick. All right, folks, just an update. We're almost to the top. We're going to that bench right up there, right there. And those deer should be up in those hills. So we got Slowpoke over here. First year for him, my fourth year. So we're working on a little bit of acclimation. Last big switchback. All right, we got our first buck. We got three actually right here. That lead deer is a really, really good buck and we're trying to figure out, he's 1300 yards right now, if we can get to him to shoot him if we side hill. So we're thinking if we can side hill over into this region over here, we might be able to get a rip at him. Barrett, he's crossing the face right now. All right, we've got three more. So I think what we're gonna do, we're gonna walk here, and if we can get over there, the first three are there, the second three are there. If we can get over here and cut the distance, we might have a shot, if not bet them. All right, even if we stay here. We're making the move right now. So you can see, all right, we're gonna work our way down right to these cuts right here. All six of those deer are right over there. So we can see them with our naked eye right now, but they're like 900 yards. And they're all just kind of chilling in the flat, so we're gonna try to cut the distance and see what we can do. All right, we just had two shots. Oh, there's another shot right now. There's still six bucks running. Now they're running pretty good. They're coming to us though. So. How far is he? They're, they're all close to the rocks now, the big ones. Can you see them? Yeah. I had him at 600. They're gone. To the right of the red rocks. They're coming across the face. They're coming this way. Number three 
face hurt. Hit him again. This high. He's hit, he's hit, he's hit, get another one in him, he's hit. Date. He ran from his spotter, so he was on his own. He <laughs> shot for what, 400, 450? Yeah. Hit him on that last one. You saw him go down. Uh, at one point, we saw him kind of jump up and then flip, roll over backwards. So we think he's dead there. We can't see him anymore. Good buck. We think he's dead. I think he's velvet too. But we are not going to count our chickens before they hatch. So no. Our plan is we're going to get him back on this road right here, and then we're going to side heel it all the way up into there. And of course, Barrett shoots him at the very freaking top and all those rocks up there. This stuff kicks your ass. You can see how I made it straight down. I don't see Barrett, he's dragging. But wouldn't trade this for anything. It's a lot better than going to work. All right, check-in time. We've been hiking for about 45 minutes. <clears throat> Barrett's about 200 yards south of me. He's up on that face, right over there. He's going straight up the mountain. I've decided to take a different route. <clears throat> I'm gonna side hill it. And you can see right above me right now, that triangular rock right there. He's laying right behind that, dead, hopefully. But I need to take a little break. My go-to, crazy snakes, gummy bears. There's some sugar and a little bit of jerky. Re-energize, head back up the hill. The other guy that shot the deer, he's still down there. He's been there for two hours cutting it up. So hopefully we can get ours cut up out of here in 20 minutes. We'll bring it to you when we get there. Hopefully he's laying there. There he is, boys. I got antlers. There he is. Bam. We're way too high up. Climbed all these scree rocks. Holy cow. All the way up. Damn it. I just missed a shot at 175. Came down here, I'm sitting here right next to the buck waiting for Barrett. And I stand up and they're bedded right behind me. I had peeked earlier and they freaking, damn it. And I couldn't get my, I had to get my percussion cap in, so it took me a little bit of time. I had him at 50 yards right here. Right there. Went up here. Shot up like right up there. God dang it. The 
biggest one ran this way. He ran over here across my face. Damn. Buck down, bro. Buck down, baby. I thought we had two. Should have been two, man. If I was taking my first instinct to be loaded when I popped up on this perch, I would have killed one. Dude, that one. They would have been 50 yards. At least they're all accounted for. Hell, I said some perch jump stuff right here because it's flat. Was he the bigger one? I feel like he was the bigger one. If those guys killed a two by two, I never saw anything bigger than that. I mean, the buck that went the other way wasn't that big. It felt probably relatively close. That's why we couldn't see him though, because he nose dived. Oh, that's true, yeah. Then he spit down here. He yep. Did you text uh, Pete? I told him that we were going to get him, but I didn't tell him that we're, we found him. Let's, let's drag his legs. He's a toad. He's, yeah, there you go. And that'll preserve his velvet. I didn't even film a video on the last phase. Barrett ran out of water, and then I ran out of water, and I just hiked my ass. Two and a half mile round trip to get water for both of us. I was so exhausted, I couldn't even film. Get this stuff boned out, maybe try to go down the mountain today, because although I had a shot that could have been 50 yards if I was ready, I'm trying to be realistic about my expectations when you're hunting these canyons about if I really can smoke a, a deer with a muzzleloader effective range 150 at best I shot at those deer today at 175 just held high that didn't work out for me so <laughs> water's flowing down there so I had to go all the way up here then all the way down past there and then I zigzag back into those trees where there's some snow melt coming through and I was able to fill up. All because I wanted to save this guy's life. <laughs> life saved. Life saved. Right here. 60% of a deer right there. Full disclosure, I do have both quarters, rear quarters. Mark took the fronts. It's because I'm the smartest one in the group. I think it's about time that we do an episode of Cribs, of where we're staying. So we're in this basin right now. In here. We're running this tent. He picked up a two-man tent for us. Try something light. It's a bit cozy. Yeah, it's a little tight, but we've got everything in here. So we got side-by-sides, all our junks at the end. Not bad. Nice little spot in here though. If it rained, you know, we've got cover. We're in a good little area. So so that would be our crib. I didn't think we'd see the day to get back to camp. Not gonna lie. Um, and I had to stop every 50 yards to sit down and drink water because I was so exhausted uh, and I had another mile and a half to go. I didn't think we'd see today at this camp. Yep. We made it. We made I, it. I was just thinking of that. Now it's, we're gonna, again. we are gonna eat a nice meal take care of the deer and go down the mountain. No more of this. I hadn't really given you a good look at this deer. So here you go. He's got a night guard there, one starting right there. Super tall. That's what we liked about him when we saw him first. And a little soft up there. Yeah, we were gonna let uh, him go. No, we weren't. But. So <laughs> there's a gene that I'm seeing in here. We're seeing a lot of bucks that have this side right here not sure what's going on with that but there's another one that's at the top of the mountain up there that looks just like this and all the ones running with that one were all the same they all structure. were the same they're just a year or two younger yeah so but four on this side a little crabby claw here i think this is from his nosedive 
which I missed that on video, but it kind of tore up that pretty good. But all in all, good day, man. One more to go. Let's see what we do. We're going to sleep. Uh... All right, so here we are in camp. I was messing around, cleaning up my deer, getting it hung and cooled. And Mark's just fiddle farting around. Oh yeah, why not? A couple of hard horn three by threes right here. And I would say 300 yards from camp. Looks like a hard horned, looks like three, a little something going on. All right. And the guy in the back's, I think, bigger. Definitely bigger. That's a good buck. I don't know which way Mark's taken up there. Jeez, that's a, that second buck's a good buck. It's past his ears. It's a pretty buck. All right, chilling on the road. Cause probably the angle, all right, he's ranging. It's a buck that Mark just shot 200 yards from camp. I think it was like a 150 yard shot. Hope Mark can put another one in him if possible. Make it quick. See if Mark can get another one in him. Then we got two deer. Ooh, he jumped. I don't know if he made it or not. That was Mark's second shot. So Mark shot again. Didn't do much. Seemed alert. Afterwards, something spooked him uphill. And he turned his head real quick. Walked reverse of where his buddy's going. Went across that rock patch right there. And then bedded down again. He just doesn't look good. All right, real quick, he's just laying now. He will not get up. He's had a fawn licking his antler. He's had a doe nose him, and he won't move. If you look at the little willows right behind that doe, center shot, you'll see his antlers sticking up. That's it. So we're just hoping that he's laying there to die. So we're gonna leave our binoculars on him tonight and wake up in the morning and see if he's dead. All right, good morning. So we're hoping that that Buck's dead overnight. I just got oven glass the last spot we saw him in, and he's not there, but uh, we got a herd of elk in here, so I'm gonna get some video of that. All right, good news. I'm just about 99% sure I got an antler right where we last glassed him last night. So I'm gonna flip it, give you an idea where he's at. So he was laying there at first, and then he went up and he laid below that willow right there. And I just glassed right where I last saw him and I see an antler sticking up through the bush. So we're gonna have to make a trek right up the chute and then cut over and get him. Buck down. Do you, do you see him? Yeah. We hit the jackpot today. Oh, yeah, we did. So, the last video you saw was yeah. me saying that I thought I saw him. We didn't find him there. He was not there. We go back to camp, and we're sitting there, and these two guys, these two hunters that were hunting elk we had seen earlier in the morning came up to camp. They're like, hey, your deer's laying in the road up there. Yeah, we can't pass by it. It's he was, <laughs> He wasn't laying literally in the road right below the, the face that we were up on, and we just... 
didn't think to look in the road. So we were just combing the hillside. But it gets better yeah. because then I'd yeah. say, hey man, we've been here three days, we're exhausted. Can you give us a ride down the mountain? And they drove the quad, got the deer, put it in the truck, and drove us down the mountain because they have a key to the gate at the bottom. I think they might be my new best friends. Yeah. Yeah, they knew the landowners next to us in the yurt so they could have their drive the yeah. stuff up here. So now we're heading back to Durango. Going to get the biggest, most fattening fast food place because that's the only thing that sounds good right now after <laughs> living up Mountain House. Oh, oh I yeah. can't wait. It's going to be good and stuff. We want to say thank you for watching our video. Thank you for coming with us and watching the experiences that we get to do with Campfire Tree. Give us a like, give us a subscribe. Like and subscribe. Hey guys. And we'll keep doing this. That's right. Fun time. We'll see you next year. Even though I say I'm never going back up the mountain, we'll see you next year. Yeah.